Population. How many of us live here? Well, guess what? We're about to find out. Every 10 years, America counts every man, woman, and child. We call it the census, and it matters to each and every one of us. My family owns a successful real estate development company here in Alhambra. It's called Pacific Plaza Premier, and we build residential housing and commercial buildings all across LA County. We care about making sure diverse communities get all the services they need. And that's where the census comes in. The more people in a community, the more state and federal funding it receives for things like schools, roads, police, and fire protection. Don't worry, the census is completely confidential and there are no questions about citizenship. Your individual information will not be shared with any government agency including law enforcement and immigration. That's the law. For more information, visit californiacensus.org. Please, stand up and be counted. Kính thưa quý vị, để thay đổi không khí trong phần phát hình hôm nay, chúng tôi xin mời quý vị theo dõi cuộc nói chuyện giữa hai nhân vật rất là quen thuộc với cộng đồng Việt Nam chúng ta, đó là ông dân biểu liên bang Scott Peters, và cô Lian Kim, một sứ ngôn viên đài số 10 ở San Diego này. Thưa quý vị, cô Lian Kim sẽ đại diện cho VNTV qua cuộc trò chuyện với ông Scott Peters với đề tài kiểm tra dân số 2020. Với một khuôn mặt và cách nhìn từ một người nằm trong chính quyền và cũng là chịu trách nhiệm cho một số ngân khoản đem về cho những tiểu bang, thì ông dân biểu liên bang sẽ có những chia sẻ và quan điểm đặc biệt về vấn đề này như thế nào. Mời quý vị theo dõi cuộc nói chuyện. Sau đây với Lian Kim và ông Scott Peters. Lian Kim, take it away. Hello everyone, I'm Lian Kim, the founder of Pacific Arts Movement. And on behalf of PAC Arts, the Union of Pan-Asian Communities, and the Count Me 2020 Coalition, we are so excited to have a conversation with Congressman Scott Peters about the importance of the census. Congressman Peters, you're looking a little scruffier than usual, but thank you so much for your time and joining us from home. Thank you so much for having me, Leanne. It is great to see you, even if it's just on a screen. No kidding. And you know, you represent the 52nd Congressional District, which is a district I live in. Great. And um, as a resident of your district, I know how firsthand, how diverse the <clears throat> community is. So. What would it mean for you if like every person in this district and for every person in the state for that matter, completes the 2020 census and what kind of impact would that have? Well, it's so important, Leanne, that everyone complete the census. Let me explain why. So every 10 years and only every 10 years, according to the constitution, we count up who lives here. And then about $1.5 trillion a year is divided up based on population. So if we don't get counted, we don't get those resources for things like highways, for things like healthcare, for Medicare, for services for homeless people. Um, if we don't count, we don't get counted that someone else gets overcounted, they'll get more of the money and more of the resources. So we wanna have those resources as well. It also de determines how many uh, members of Congress California has. If we don't count everyone, it may be that we'll lose a, a seat in Congress, we'll have less representation. So it's really, really important that everyone uh, fill out the census. We all need to be counted. It only happens once every 10 years and I really encourage everyone to do it because it means a lot for us and our neighbors. Sure, and those are some real critical resources that you mentioned as well as the congressional redistricting. Um, the fact that we're dealing with this coronavirus pandemic is just so untimely, Congressman. In your view, how has the, this crisis impacted the census outreach? Well, it definitely makes it difficult. And I think there's some talk about extending uh, deadlines that, that would have to be voted on by Congress. But if you know, we would typically um, hire people to go door to door and follow up on the online surveys that we do. And that's not gonna happen now, obviously. So it really puts, um, it puts a real premium on making sure that everyone does fill out the census online or in the mail that follows up the online. The good news, I guess, is that we're fairly digitally connected in my district and the AAPI community 
is extremely well connected and comfortable um, responding to these kinds of things digitally. So with the extra time you have at home, uh, one of the things that you can all do is make sure that you fill out the census. Um, it's easy to do. You can do it in front of the, the, the TV. It doesn't, it's not a complicated form, but uh, just make sure you spend the time to do it and take the extra time you have because of the COVID problem to fill out the census form. Right, you make some really good points. We do have a lot of time. We're at home, with, we're with our loved ones, and the APIA community, which has traditionally been a harder to reach community for various reasons, right. um, is more digitally connected. So um, there is hope that there'll be more. Um, and one thing is I too, I, I know about, about your community from um, having such a strong representation. I think we're the 20 or the top 25 most AAPI uh, districts in Congress. But family units are very strong. I know. I think you helped your fa your parents fill out their um, their census form, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, that's correct. I mean, I would definitely consider my parents to be in that hard to reach population right. because English is their second language, and right. to be quite frank, they are technically challenged. Right. And so you know, I had the time. Um, and also the, the resources to be able to help them right. um, pull out their census form. And the great thing about the API community, as you may know, is that you know, there are sometimes several generations of us living together. Um, and so we're very close to some of those harder to reach um, uh, residents. And so right. hopefully with uh, this first time availability of filling out right. online, we're gonna see different results. And that's a strength for the community. So I hope that, uh, hope that people take advantage of that. Yeah, I do want to um, ask you, Congressman, about um, some lingering fears that there might be. I know that there's no citizenship question on the census, but there might be still some concerns about how the government is using this information. So what can you say to those who are concerned for their privacy? Well, we're concerned about that, too. And that's why there's very strict prohibitions against using any of this data for anything other than the census. So um, they don't ask your social security number. They don't ask you for anything that's not related to counting who's in your household and how old they are and those kinds of questions. So you don't have to worry about that. The protections are very strong. Uh, the information will only be used for the census. And as I said before, Leanne, it's very critical to helping us get the resources that we all need to support our highways, our schools, um, and our social services. Yeah. Um, and to clarify, Congressman, everyone who is a resident, regardless of status, should take the census? Right, because that's exactly right, because um, the, a lot of the allocation of resources that we get from the census is based on who's living where and not necessarily what their um, immigration or citizenship status is. So please, please fill out the form, fill it out for everyone so that we're all counted and we get our fair share of, of federal resources. And I'm assuming that you filled out your census as well? I did, I filled it out um, and uh, was happy to do it. I did it online, it was very easy. Uh, and my, my um, wife helped her mom who lives here and she's also extremely digitally challenged. But we filled out the, the census for her as well. So I think we're all, we're all covered. Great. And given the current circumstances, as you mentioned, the Census Bureau is um, thinking about extending the deadline for collecting this data. But honestly, it's best for everyone to just respond as soon as possible. We can't count on the deadline being extended. So please, if you have it, wouldn't it be nice to get rid of it? You don't have to think of it anymore. Let's get it behind you and get counted and then um, go back to uh, enjoying the extra family time we have. That's some good advice. Is there um, anything else that you'd like to add before we share the website information? I want to thank you for doing this. I want to thank uh, for you. You've always been a good friend to me, and VFTV has been a great friend to me um, for getting the word out. So I want to thank you for very much for having me. This is a very important um, issue for me personally, but for all of us uh, here in the district. So um, thanks for helping to get the word out. And if people have questions, they can always call. I know you're going to get the information out. Yeah, thank you, Congressman, and you know, wishing you and your family continued health and safety. Now, the best and easiest way to the best and easiest way to complete the census is doing it online. You can go to the website countme2020.org to find more information and resources on the census, complete the nine questions, or access thirteen phone numbers to the for those who want to complete it by phone in their native language. So, let's all do our part to get counted.